Hello folks, uh, sorry for the delay in posting this, but I really wanted to um, do a, a lecture on design, um, and I did not have this ready for you, and it's been kind of a crazy week. But, um, so let's talk about design. What is design for the theater? Well, design, what do designers do? Design ultimately creates the visual landscape and world of the play, right? The designers are the artists who create that world. Uh, traditionally, there are three types of visual design. We have scenic designers, we have costume designers, and we have lighting designers. Um, there's also a sound designer, but I'm not going to talk about sound today. We're going to focus on the visual aspect of storytelling. Um, a lot of times on productions, you will see um, multiple people in the in 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 design role in design roles. So it, you know, I've worked with a scenic and costume designer before. Um, I've worked with a scenic and lighting designer before. I've worked with a lighting and sound designer before. I've done lighting and sound design on the same show. Um, but typically, there's usually three to four designers working within the world to create the world of the play. So the scenic designer creates the physical elements of the play, right? The environment, the playing space. It's visually evocative for the audience and reflects the show's concepts and themes. I like to think of the scenic design as the ultimate visual metaphor for the play. Sometimes the scenic design is stagnant. Sometimes it's multiple places. Sometimes it's a unit set that transforms um, into multiple places. Sometimes there's multiple sets that move within within the, the, the theater, but it all depends on the size of the theater and the shape of the theater and the budget with which to produce the play. Um, the costume designer is the designer that's most closely associated with the actor. They visually create the character um, and they work very closely in tandem with the scenic designer to add to the overall visual picture. Um, if the scenic designer and the director decide that the play is going to be set in, you know, 1890s Victorian London, and the costume designer comes in with research from 1850s uh, antebellum South Southern America, the visual picture is not going to line up. Um, so they, they work very closely uh, with the scenic designer in terms of their color palette, their time, their period research, and, and the, 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 the time period. The other thing that costume designers can do is create character and show economic status, establish a time period. There's a lot of things that, that we can tell to the audience just through costumes and just what that does to elevate or... Um, lower the status of a character. And then finally, the lighting designer. Um, the lighting design is ephemeral, right? Uh, the, the, the scenic designer and the costume designer can draw pictures and create models and show the director exactly what they're going to put on stage. As the lighting designer, I'm like, well, it could be blue. Um, <laughs> I try to talk in more um, atmospheric words and use um, more descriptive words. Um, like I, I, I might tell a director that at any given moment the, the actor will be bathed in saturate blue light. Um, I might talk about time of day. Um, I might talk about um, visually selecting something that is important for the audience to take note, right? I'll establish time and place um, I will help reinforce the overall look of the play, and I will do that by taking into consideration the color palette of the scenic and costume designer, um, and I will, I will consider their color palette when I choose my color palette of light, because I can take a beautiful red sweater and make it look like an ugly green-brown by choosing the wrong colors to put on um, the, the different um, visual elements that the other designers have given me to light. Um, but really what I'd love to do is work with focus and visibility. And as I said, selective visibility. I'm dictating where the audience looks on stage. Um, does that make sense to everybody? I hope it does. Um, we're going to talk a little, bit uh, a little bit now about how designers use the five elements of design, right? So what are those five elements of design? We have line, shape, texture, color, and value. 
So within line, right, we have the basic building block of design. It's a two-dimensional unit used to define shape. And there are different qualities, thicknesses, length, direction, curved, diagonal, wavy, right? Line has character and tells us things, right? Line can also create the overall silhouette of a costume or set, right? We're seeing just the lines of this silhouette, but it's giving us a lot of information about who these characters are and what is happening here, right? And as I said, lines have character. The quality of line used can give information about character or place. For example, what does the line and the silhouette of these two characters tell us? One is sharp and dangerous, and one is fluffy and soft and light and airy. Um, and so the line really dictates that for us. The quality of lines used within a set can enhance the mood of a production or give the sense of the world of the story. It can be jagged, it can be shaped, it can be straight and organized or chaotic and, 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 and frenetic. Line can be expressed through light by angle and direction chosen by the designer. Um, we can accentuate the line of the actors or the performers on stage. We can accentuate the line of the costumes and the scenery. Um, and we do that by, by uh, specifically choosing how the direction of the light is traveling onto stage. The angle of a beam can also create line, right? It can be sharp and direct and focused, um, or it can be soft and um, have undefined edges and create a sense of um, movement. Shape is the product that's created by lines. Where lines meet, shape is made, right? Shape creates form, which is three-dimensional space. And we can look at what the shapes are telling us about these characters below. Um, they're, they're grotesque, they're over-exaggerated, right? The shape is large. Um, and it's over-exaggerated. So that tells us about the play and about these characters. Shape, form, and space create the playing space, right? Scenery can support status by creating the shape and the mood of the play, right? We're elevating a character. We're creating danger. We're creating a hierarchy within this image below. Um, shape can also tell us if we're in a realistic environment or a stylistic environment. So the image on the left is a traditional box set of a home in the 1950s, whereas the image on the right is a stylistic environment of the woods, right? And the line and the shape that's used within this image tells us that it's an unrealistic woods. Light creates space through isolation and focus, as I talked about selective visibility. This is a box set that did not change, right? It was static. It was always this trestle, but we had to create a jail a home and the trestle. Um, and so light was able to isolate and focus on stage to create new areas and transform the, 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 the playing space with shape. Color is the scientific relationship of colors creating unity between characters, right? So um, complementary, complementary characters, complementary colors, I'm sorry, can contrast. So if we look at the color wheel below, blue and orange are complementary colors, right? But they're contrasting co colors. Um, similar colors create harmony, right? So orange ac right across from the color wheel and blue um, contrast, right? Red, orange, and yellow are similar. They create harmony. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's take a look at how that works within um, costumes, right? So in the top right corner is a very famous production of Franco Zeffirelli's uh, film Romeo and Juliet. Throughout that film, you can tell who's associated with the, the character on the left, Ro uh, Juliet, the Capulets, by the color of the costumes. Anyone in that red, orange, amber, yellow tone would be associated with the Capulets, as um, anyone in the blue and the green tone would be associated with Romeo and the Montague family. We can also see in the bottom right corner that one, uh, one of the characters obviously does not fit with the other three characters. We can see in the top left corner and the bottom left corner that those characters are groups of people that are harmonious and belong together. Um, color can also be used as symbols, right? Black versus white. 
gold to show regalness, um, red to show lustfulness. We have the image of Hamlet in the center there in uh, being mournful and, and, and melancholy. And so he's in the, the darker uh, mourning clothes uh, to mourn his father. We have the, the iconic image of the Lone Ranger in the white hat, right? Or the little boy in white versus the evil man in black, right? So color can be used to symbolize characters. Color chosen for a set can also create a sense of mood and environment for the play, right? So we've got the, the picture on the left is a picture of the Greek play, The Trojan Women, which it's dark, it's dangerous, it's, it, it, it tells us something about the place. Whereas the cat in the hat below is light and airy and fun. And so it gives us a sense of what we're about to experience in the journey. Um, light can also enhance the mood of a play uh, we have warm versus cool light, natural versus abstract, um, and the color within that light can dictate daytime or nighttime, storm, realistic, uh, uh, abstract. In these two images, we have the, the abstract version of night versus a very realistic portrayal of a gas lamp. We also have value, which is the relationship between light and dark on a surface or an object, right? This determines balance in our composition, right? We want things that have a variety of value. We don't want everything to be completely saturated, right? And we can see from these images that we're definitely getting a sense of, uh, of balance within these, right? It's not all dark images. There's a good blend of light versus dark within all of the scenic elements and the costume elements. We also have texture, right? The way the surface of an, of an object actually feels or appears to feel, right? And we can do that two ways. We can do tactile versus implied, right? So the image on the right of the wood, that's, a pe that's an actual piece of wood that has real texture that you can feel and get a sliver from. Whereas the two other images are painted images. One is of leaves, which have texture, and the other is of a textured cobblestone road. We also have texture in costumes that tell us a lot of information um, about these people, right? Texture, the, 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 the texture of the woman on the bottom right is very metallic and regal, right? The texture above her is soft and fluffy and comical, right? The texture of the, the person on the bottom left um, is slick and smooth and dangerous. Texture can be achieved through light by adding pattern and changing the consistency of what the light passes through, right? So we have these things called templates or gobos, um, and you can see in the top right, or top left, excuse me, um, those are the different patterns that you can put in a light. Um, the top right image shows um, light being filtered through a, um, a leaf gobo. You can see the bottom right image shows the um, this kind of construction view that kind of looks like light coming through uh,